Hello again. Um, finally, we're able to move on to the optics part of the course, which is something I'm very excited about. We're moving on from talking about mechanical waves and sound waves onto electromagnetic waves and ultimately light. You'll recall when we first discussed our wave equation, we also did the derivation for the electromagnetic waves. Um, quick reminder, this is based on the four Maxwell's equation, which governs electric field and magnetic field. Combining all those, basically saying changing electric field gives rise to a magnetic field, and changing magnetic field gives rise to an electric field, ultimately giving us two wave equations, one for the electric field and one for the magnetic field. If you want a refresher, go right back and look at that video. In any case, we once again have the double temporal derivative related to the double spatial derivative. Therefore, wave equation, we know we have traveling waves. The wave speed, of course, is given by the factor here, which is going to give us the speed of light, which is related to the mu naught and epsilon naught, which are both universal constants in the case of vacuum. So the most common solution we'll look at kind of has the shape as illustrated here you see that the electric field and the magnetic field are both perpendicular to the direction of propagation as well as perpendicular to each other. The direction of propagation is given by what's known as the pointing vector. Now, this is pointing with a Y, it's not a typo. It's due to Mr. Pointing. It's a very <laughs> interesting choice of last name, but it's good that he was the guy that discovered it because this pointing vector tells us which way the electromagnetic field is propagating or pointing towards. How you get that is through a cross product. So you have the pointing vector is equal to the electric field direction cross the magnetic field direction. And therefore we can use the right hand rule for any cross product. If we stick out our thumb and our palm is on this side, we stick out our middle finger and then we have something like that. Then if the thumb points in the E and the index finger points with the B, then the pointing vector is in the S. So you can verify that with the diagram here. So there you go. Direction of propagation given by pointing vector by this cross product here. And in terms of magnitude, we have the electric field is C times B. Because C is so big, E tends to have a much bigger number than B would. So often we'll just talk about E instead. And this solution, once given the direction of the electric field and the direction of propagation, we've completely defined what direction and magnitude the um, magnetic field would be. And this on the whole is called the transverse electromagnetic wave solution. And that solution encompass all kinds of EM waves, as you can see here, all the way from gamma ray, X-ray, ultraviolet, visible, um, infrared, and so on and so forth. We'll be focusing mostly on the visible spectrum because it's what our eyes can look at and we can relate to that a little better. But the thing to notice here is because the speed of light is three times 10 to the eighth meters per second, um, the frequency tends to be very, very high. Usually for visible light, it's somewhere in the 10 to the 15. So it's not very convenient to talk about light in terms of frequency as we would have done for sound. Instead, it's a little easier to talk about wavelengths because it's in hundreds of nanometers. So it can, as you can see down here, it's roughly 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. And that's how we would often talk about um, visible light in terms of wavelength. Of course, this is wavelength in vacuum. So if you cross different medium, the wavelength is going to change. The speed is going to change as well. And therefore, we define the index of refraction. The index of refraction tells you in any given medium, what is the wave speed in that medium and how is that corrected from your normal speed of light in vacuum, which is here, of course, as C. And this N is typically greater than 1. There are some funny material that even gives you a negative N, but we won't deal with that. We'll stick with normal material that has a um, N of one. As well, uh, here's some sample 
typical ones we often tend to use. Uh, in air, the index of refraction is 1.000 something. And so it's very close to the vacuum. So we often take air as just have an N of one, make things a little simpler. Water, roughly 1.33. And then glass, depending on what type of glass, 1.4, 1.7. But 1.5 is kind of like your ballpark go-to number for glass. That's the index of refraction, which tells you the ratio between the speed in different medium as opposed to in vacuum. And therefore, it also tells you the relation between the wavelength versus the wavelength in vacuum as well, because the frequency stays the same. And then, of course, that's related to the wavelength in vacuum and therefore de facto with air as well.